Welcome to After Hours with your host, Cans. Well, hello, folks. It's me again. I know you guys want to see Larry. I want to see Larry. I want to see Mark. Um, just got to put up with me for just one more, one more time. But I'm sure glad you guys are joining us this evening for After Hours. Got a, got a great guest. I'm um, trying to make sure I get everything taken care of here in uh, chat, um, reading comments, get a little more focused with this. Um, glad you guys are being, being patient with me. I appreciate that a lot. And um, I want to let you know that tonight we're going to have uh, Carter Bouchard on, uh, probably the James Brown of the Bigfoot world, hardest working man in Bigfoot land, maybe. Yeah, um, baby. <laughs> hitting over how uh 60 to 80 appearances probably within the last year i think um he, he mentioned to me on yes East- somewhere in there yeah you know i'm I around 45 to, to 60 a year so conferences um, yeah, yeah yeah you had uh one i think when we first talked you were going down to uh uh joplin i think was uh yeah joplin uh, hit hit things around here. That's an, another reason I wanted to re- get you on here again. You, you've had two appearances here the last year on uh, Beast TV, talking about uh, your books and and some of the uh, out of the ordinary experiences that we'll we'll focus on. But I wanted to kind of hit you know your your bio. You know you've been an investigator with BFRO for 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 years. What well, over. 13, almost 15 years, I think. Yeah, I think 12, 13, 13, 14, somewhere. I've, I've just kind of quit keeping track. Right. Know. We'll talk a little bit about the BFRO later. And you're originally from Texas, currently live in Missouri, in my neck of the woods. You're up in, in, in Liberty. Um, yep. Had, I'm, uh, old, I'm an old Texas boy. Dallas, Texas. Gotcha. And um, had over 400 witnesses and uh, – Counting and, and other reports, a hundred reports that you've had published on the BFRO. Um, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm right at a hundred, you know. And okay. uh, I've interviewed four hundred plus witnesses. They keep rolling in. Today, I had another call from out of nowhere. You know, it's just it, it, it talking to people begets more talking to more people. It's really awesome, you know. And so. Uh, and also part of your background at one time you were with, with MUFON also? I uh, trained uh, to be a MUFON okay. investigator and my uh, sponsor was what they call is the guy that was assigned to me to kind of help me study because they had a really thick book. You have to learn the constellations. It's not like just, you know, put on a badge and a hat and oh. a flashlight and go out looking for UFOs. You have to you have to know the constellations and so there's a test. Yeah, there, there's there, there's technical aspects of it you really have to know. So, gotcha. but the guy that I was working with, who was my mentor sponsor, uh, he said, you know, if you really are serious about this, I wouldn't move forward. I'd go do something that you're interested in because the government takes our reports and tells us to talk about them or not. And when they tell you not to talk about them, you don't talk about them. Gotcha. Which means we're on the ball. But so, so early on in this process, you know, you you kind of ran into uh, censorship, right? Or or or, or kind of gatekeeping. Yeah, uh, mas- massaging yeah. the facts a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and That's uh, a yeah. all right, and and you've also um, had some. Uh, encounters your, yourself you've had yeah. you've had uh properties that you've been uh lucky enough to to have access to that are habituation sites um visitation sites yeah um and so carter i mean tell me you know i know you're on tons of shows and everybody you know kind of asks you the same question but just in the synopsis, I mean, I, you talked a little bit about early on kind of having a, a curiosity for things of the strange and kind of wanting to know the truth and kind of kind of 
describe in, in a nutshell how, how that kind of evolved into to what, what you're doing now as far as your interest in, in, in Bigfoot and Sasquatch. Yeah. Well, you know, I always, you know, about the age of 10 and this part of the story was very, very interesting, but it, it goes way down a different rabbit hole. So we'll just leave it at that. But around the age of 10, I became aware, uh, in my heart and soul that there was something else going on in the universe, you know, uh, you know, and that's about the time I saw the, uh, in search of with Leonard Nimoy. First time I saw the Patty, uh, the Patty film and I was going, Oh my God, I, I, I love this. I mean, it's, it's not like the world I was in. It's, it's the world I wanted to be in a world I wanted to investigate and learn about was that, you know, there was maybe life on other planets, there's other creatures, there's other things going on. I just, I always had this sense. And so that's kind of what got me on the path, you know? And uh, so- Well, well, along that path, you kind of had a a detour though also, because you you were a drummer. I mean, you you were a comedian. Um, Yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of translate, how how do you go from, from those two endeavors into to, to where you're at like like right now as a as an investigator yeah well that, that's a weird story but uh yeah uh right out of high school uh you know uh in 69 uh i was playing in bands you know 1971 we opened for the who in dallas texas right and I, I had several really really good bands we were supposed to be the next big thing you know i grew up playing with stevie ray and jimmy vaughn you know thunderbird stevie ray vaughn and oh yeah we're all from Dallas, uh, you know, Texas, right. South Oklahoma. Right. So, uh, we grew up and we're, I wouldn't even say competing bands. We were all just working and playing and having a, a, a great time. And you know, the business aspect of it, we weren't even worried about, you know, but uh, uh, I was playing music. I mean, you know, I, I was on the big stages and it just, you know, didn't happen for us. You know, we opened for the uh, the cars and journey Taj Mahal. I mean, I had several bands that were in the thick of things. It just never happened, you know, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. So I was a drummer for about 20 years. And, uh, then I did, uh, improv and sketch comedy for about five years. And one of my partner, we had three of us in a group and my comedy partner passed away and my other partner and I could not agree on a direction to go. So, uh, all during my entertainment years, someone would say, you know, if you ever get out of, you know, entertainment, doing a comedy, you'd be great in real estate. Cause you know, you, you just real personally like talking to people. So suddenly my partner dies. I'm going, God, I gotta get a real job. Ooh, where am I going to That was it. And I was like, sure. oh crap. Okay. So I, you know, I studied, got my real estate license and I've been selling real estate for 25, 26 years. I still gotcha. do it part-time. I'm semi-retired, but right. You know, but that pulled- yeah, Go ahead. That plays a part in, in, in helping you as far as having that gift of, of being able to to talk to people, to put it at ease, kind of in the in a in the bonding and rapport stage of kind of what sales is like is what you have to do with with these witnesses that you talk to and you, and you come in contact. Because as part of what but especially what you delve into in your books are things that are number one. OK, they're about big for the things that d- don't exist. But even on that scale, it's outside the realm of even some of the most common uh, Bigfoot uh, sightings or encounters. Yeah, it's it's... exactly. So, I mean, I mean, we were, I think you were even telling me one um, that that I saw, there was a report out by the the Kansas Speedway about, about a a woman seeing something was on all fours, but had what did have like a jacket on or clothing on or something? It stoplight. It was, uh, like the Blues Brothers, it was a black slacks, black jacket, white shirt. And so it, it's just weird. And I met her at a conference. She came up to my table, you know, and she didn't want anything. She just, I got to tell you this. And I don't laugh at me. Everybody just laughs at me and rolls around. So she tells me the story and uh, it, it's, it's bizarre, but. I got no sense she was BSing me. She was just wanting to get it out. And there was a and there was another guy that was like uh, experiencing the the same encounter because he was because she noticed him at first, right? She noticed him freaking out in the car or something. And yeah, she pulled up to uh, an intersection, a four way. I mean, a, you know, 
an intersection. Right. And it was uh, four lanes, you know, two going this way and two, two her direction. And, and out there in the speedway, that's pretty rural land in certain parts of that. So it's not yeah, just like it was on State Avenue just before you get to 435, out there by kind of where the woodlands sure. used to be out in that sure. area. You know? Yeah. And so uh, she's pulling up and slowing down. And as she's pulling up, it's real slow. She sees the guy in the car to her left at the stoplight. He's like, doing all this he's screaming and yelling he's he's you know he's like crying he's she could see his face is just beat red he's just freaking out in the right. car and it looks like he's trying to get out of his car he's trying the handles you know he's trying the windows he's trying you know nothing works and she's going what the heck god what is wrong with you dude and she finally gets up even and she's pulled up right next to the car and she's waiting for the light and she sees right in front of his car, and it's walking across the street on all fours, oh. is a Sasquatch in slacks and a black jacket and a right. white shirt. Right. Okay. You know, I've got an open mind, but she goes on to describe in great detail that she sees this creature. She describes it as walking on its hands and feet not hands and knees because sasquatch mo uh, their motion they're running on all fours is hands and feet the power that they have and so she differentiated between hands and knees and hands and feet right and that's that's something that only people who've actually seen this would actually know to say they're on their feet and hands and so Either she's very well prepared hoaxer or she was telling me the story. So anyway, yeah. this thing walks across, but it is got its butt uh, up in the air and it's arched just like people that see him in the woods describe. And the back is arched. So it's pretty much even with the hood of her car. It's just walking across, but it's on all fours. It's doing this, goes across, the light changes and she's like, what do I, what do I, you know, I, I guess I better go. So she goes forward right. and as she goes forward, that guy is still freaking out. He's so traumatized. He right. can't go anywhere. He's not going anywhere. He can't seem to get his car to work. He's freaking out. He's like pounding on the window trying to get, I mean, it's just, and she just drives off and he's still there. You know, she sees in the rearview mirror, she's four or five blocks down, right approaching 435 there, and he's still sitting there, and the car is kind of still rocking. He is totally going right. berserk. Yeah, just that's one of those that's one of those that you, you've come into contact with. You just there's no motivation for people, you know, yeah. making that up, coming to you at a conference and saying something like that. I, I don't know. It's just there's it, some, those are some odd odd things and, you know, and whether she, that's how people get their jollies where she runs off to her friends out in the parking lot oh i told him i think he bought it you know? <laughs> you know, right. I, I, I don't know but it's just you know i heard uh from a friend of mine who lives in oklahoma he's a witness and he has his own sasquatch group out there he's a native american he's uh kato uh, kato right. Indian, the kato tribe out there in anadarko uh oklahoma and I've known him for several years, and he he called in a few reports, uh, and he talks about things that the elders do not want him talking about uh, because they they still try to keep that hush hush. But he told me about two women he knows very well. Both saw a Sasquatch or Sasquatch-like creature walking around in a clown outfit clown outfit i think i remember i remember you, that was yeah one you mentioned right now him i believe but the story he was told may have come from second or third hand but they're native american connected they're all native american people living out there on reservations you know out there in the oil fees in anadarko oklahoma in that area right and they're right. like you know that's what they were reported, you know, and 
and so what do you what do you do with that when you hear that stuff? You know, now can they disguise and cloak and make you think? You know, when you, when I hear stories like that, hmm. it makes me I think of you know, aliens who give you screen memories so you will not remember what you saw. You'll see something that you can relate to because they don't want you to remember what you saw. Like if you're, you know, alien abductions is a good example, you know, where right. people are taken and uh, what you remember is, you know, you, you, you saw the grays, the, the aliens with the, you know, the little four foot tall, real scrawny with big heads and great big eyes. Correct. Well, when you are given a screen memory, when you start to maybe uh, reconnect with the dots and you go, God, that was an alien. I, that was a great, no, it was a deer. Or an owl, something with big eyes. Brain, brain has defense mechanism to make it make sense for you to kind of get yeah, it. It's, it's what they call a screen memory. Many people know what that is, but you know. Right. So it, it's not to say that a Sasquatch, Sasquatch can't do the same thing if it wants to. That's just a bizarre take on it. Is the right? But there, but there's super. been other reports though, kind of, of sometimes of of like uh, maybe. Sasquatch with with blankets or, or or articles of clothing that they might like drag around with them, but but so well, you investigated in in Oklahoma, um, what Ar or Arkansas, Missouri, yeah, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Kansas, Missouri. Now there were also some reports, uh, um, up near the Kansas. City, right? So there's there's you know you know Northwest Missouri, Eastern Kansas. There's been, been sightings around, around this area also that you, you've, you've taken. Yeah, you're, well, you in Johnson County? Yeah. Yeah, yeah out there at uh, Corporate Woods, uh, there's a uh, nursing facility, and uh, she had uh, seen footprints. She went out to take a, a lunch and she decided to walk through the woods out there in Corporate Woods. And it's a nursing facility. And she sent me a picture. It, it, one of those like it was, probably was a footprint but it had been obliterated by exposure you know it, it, it had the shape but right. the toes were just barely there and you know there's there's it, it, it probably was but it was just not the greatest one but she was adamant so uh yeah all, all kinds of reports i mean it's just bizarre there in every zip code i mean people or sadly mistaken if they think they just live in the deep, deep woods. Oh, that's their primary, you know, habitat. Right. Any dog man reports around, around here, around North, Northwest Missouri or, or Eastern Kansas. Uh, I took two Sasquatch reports that were South of Harrisonville sure. that included a dog man report seen in the same night by one couple. They watched a white Sasquatch down around. Uh, there's a place called Amarugia. Constantly. Sure. Oh, I've been over there. I've been okay. over there. There was the oh, uh, now, that that has a Native American uh, heritage to it. Uh, but uh, the the creature that he saw, he later found out, was called nicknamed the Amarugia Ridge Runner. Correct. And there's a band called right. the Amarugia Ridge Runners. And they, I don't know what kind of music they play, but they're from down that air, that area. Right. Uh, but this guy called in a report. It's one of the last reports I did for BFRO uh, about, about two years ago. And it was uh, him and his girlfriend saw a white Sasquatch from the knees up walking through this big cornfield, nice bright full moon. Wow. Uh, they saw it and they decided to get the heck out of there. And they ran back to their car, walked briskly back to their car. And on the way back, he sees she's already in the car. She beats him to the car. She said, I'm out of here. You know, so she's in the car and he's on his way back to the car. And he sees what he described as that creature that was in the movie with Brendan Fraser, the mummy. Oh, it was yeah. the Anubis. Right. And it was this one he saw. He described it with big, wide scrawny shoulders. I mean, his shoulders were like way out here, real scrawny and the backwards bent dog legs. Gotcha. He was adamant about that. So he saw it 
after he had seen the Sasquatch, you didn't see them together. If they were together, he missed that part. He was just trying to get back his girlfriend out right. and ran back to the car. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, well, yeah, but, that's that's a creepy area over there. I, I've been over there. It's. Uh, um, I mean, there's nothing really around that that lake. Um, no, there's, there's not. There's fields and there's a there's a big ridge that runs kind of south of that. And I drove kind of back down one of those dirt roads and ended up back in somebody's like almost front yard that this road kind of went through their driveway land. It was still yeah. a county maintained road, but it was like I'm driving like through the middle of their field and, and the guy pulls up next to me in a uh in a side by side kind of looking at me sideways like like what are you doing here? And I'm like, uh just 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 passing through, you know. I'm lost. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But away, yeah, I'm not gonna steal anything, you know. Yeah, there's a wetland. There's a little wetlands. Uh, uh, bitters and marsh. There's a marsh. marsh. There's a marsh. Yeah. Right, it's a conservationary, right. but it's a it's a it's a it's a wetland, and it's uh, used by a lot of duck hunters and uh, bird enthusiasts to watch migrating fowl. I think it, it's a popular area for that. Uh, but that area, uh, according to a couple of people I talked to, uh, researching that incident is got a lot of Native American lore. And that the Sasquatch shapeshifters are, I wouldn't say prevalent, but known to have been seen in that area. Interesting. You know, interesting. Uh, don't get a lot of reports out of that area, but that was just interesting because this is not that far right. really from here. No, no, not at all. Um, any, anything in the like in, in into like Western Kansas or South Central Kansas down around Wichita or anything like that? Yeah, uh, I've had reports. Uh, uh, Wichita was an interesting. Now, I had several reports uh, of uh, down near Pratt, Kansas, Highway 54. Yeah, that's out there. It's familiar. Kingman, Kansas. Right. Pratt, that's Kansas. way. That's almost Colorado. Yeah, that's where men are men and the sheep are nervous. <laughs> you know. But, you know, I've had several reports out there three or four reports of white Sasquatch. Oh, uh, wow. One couple are pretty sure they saw the same one twice, once as a juvenile and once as an adult. They just recognized uh, both times they saw it, it was eating roadkill deer by the side of a highway. And they recognize the eyes and the facial area, they recognized that they, 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 not because it was white, but, but, but because it just looked familiar in the face. I think that's the one we saw four or five years ago. Look at oh, yeah. it. You know, they, they had this conversation in the car. They, they weren't even freaked out on the second time. They're going, they're arguing about, is that the one we saw the first time or not? I mean, it's, it, it's funny. You know, they were going, right. well, my husband just says, no, nah, that can't be. What are the odds of you know us seeing the same one twice? Well, what are the odds of you seeing one at all? So, but she was adamant that this was the same one that they had seen. You know, it had blood, on, you know, blood all over its white hair and just dripping down at, at the side of the, the highway, you know, uh, off of 54. Right. Uh, the other sighting for the other couple was uh, on 54 uh, by the Walmart. There's a big Walmart out there. Interesting. In Pratt. And then I have a guy in Kansas who found one uh, under his house. He bought a cabin from his family that had been in the family. He retired from one of the uh, airline companies out there at uh, Wichita. Oh, yeah, yeah sure. Sure. And uh, uh, Beechcraft, I think. Uh, and he retired and he didn't have really a place to live. He lived in, in Wichita somewhere. So his uh, sister, brother-in-law, I can't remember. They had a cabin that had been in the family for years. So he bought it from him. It had been vacant for a couple of years. Well, he's out there redoing the place and he's here and pounding on the outside of the house. They're pounding you know, the Sasquatch or so they're pounding on the walls they're upset because they took that place over for about three, four years when nobody lived there. And right. his brother-in-law and sister, whoever it was, 
had gone by every couple of months and maintained it, mowed it, kept it clean, and you know, kept it safe, made sure nobody was breaking in and all that. But uh, apparently, a Sasquatch or two had taken up residence underneath the uh, deck. And he's a little was, bit bigger than a raccoon and a possum. Oh man, yeah. Well, he was under there one day uh, working, uh, shoring up the deck, you know, putting, fixing some rotted timbers. And he, you know, he starts smelling stuff and he sees this smoothed out area under the deck. It's all, I mean, it's just like a baby's butt. It's just perfectly <laughs> manicured. It's just, you know, it's like, it was so pristine and nice. It looks like somebody had swept it or something. It was just bizarre. And he's under there working and all of a sudden he sees a, a Sasquatch walk around the deck. He walk, he sees it from about the knees down. He see, and he sees oh. the legs. And he's under there. He, he he's just like, whoa, 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 what do I do? You know, so he called. I went out there to see him. You know, sure. that's the one thing. I probably met a third to half of all the people that I have had reports published for. I actually get my hands dirty. I go meet these right. people. Right. You know? Now, with 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 that in mind, let's shift gears just a little bit as far as the in, investigator, because you've been doing this for for a long time, and and um, you've interviewed numerous witnesses taking their statements. I mean, we kind of did on some of the pre-show. It's like, what, what do you do for your, your, your preparation? Like when you, when you're ready to go out, um, you know, uh, you know, not necessarily interview somebody, but when you're going out just in the field yourself, I mean, what are you, what are you taking with you? What's your mindset? What, you know, you, you mentioned you, you carry some, some things with you, some electronics, some other, other things to, uh, uh, for instance, a DNA kit, you know, what, yeah, what, I carry a little of everything. You know, I overpack. I mean, there have been times where I've only I, I carry three big uh, toolboxes, but they're on wheels. They're they're you know they're chests. Right. All my gear. One is just all cameras. You know, one is all cords and chargers, uh, SD cards, spare cards, spare batteries. The other one is, uh, you know despair of electronics of every kind one of them and another case is my dna kit which is basically a crime scene kit you know right. if i come upon a body fingerprints hair hand foot anything i carry casting material I use ultra cal 30. i carry everything right. if a cop needs something like i said the other night all you gotta do is come tap me on the window i probably got what you need if you right. need you know, DNA, gloves, fingerprint material, you know, uh, blood, scat, sample gathering materials. I mean, all of that stuff. Right. So I carry all that with me. The, the day I don't is the day I need it. So you just go, you know, I got it down to a science. I can be fully loaded and ready to go in 30 minutes or less. If someone calls me, I get out of here right now. It's your Bigfoot go bag. You, you got it That's ready it. to go. I've, I've got a go pack, but you know, I'm, I'm ready. I carry a 50 pound sack of ultra cal, uh, print casting material. It stays in the, in my Jeep all, all the time. It's just always there. And you've gotten prints as, as you can as people can see on the wall behind you, gotten a, a handprint. And have you also gotten, uh, any hair samples? Have you ever picked up any hair samples? I've got a few, but they were improperly gathered. In other words, well, I, I picked it up and I put it in my cigarette case. Well, you shouldn't have touched it in the first place. Right. You know, because right. it's going to be contaminated. So it's going to have human traces as well as whatever else it is. You know, I've got some hairs here. I've got another guy sending me some now. I haven't got them yet. Uh, so, you know, uh, the hair and scat is really, it's tough to get that where it's fresh and has not been exposed to the elements. You've got, I mean, if you're going to get scat, you need to walk up as soon as it just got dumped, put it in a bag somewhere, you know, I got you. And it, so I have material to gather all that stuff, but getting it done timely and it costs four to 800 bucks to get even a minimum DNA workup done. Correct. That's Correct. out of your pocket. My pocket ain't going to happen, you know? Right. And so you were employing, employing, those those techniques when you're um go down on outings with the bfr but also um in, in doing some of the interviews take taking some of those those accounts i mean that that's kind of a, a transition we can we can use for you know stepping in this next area about your experience with the bfro and and 
them as you've answered and, and, and talked about on previous shows. So it's not like I'm, you know, you know, asking you something that might be out of bounds or something like that. But, but you mentioned that these, these reports were sanitized, that they weren't necessarily including all the, all, everything that was happening to these people or the, what people were experiencing and, and, and passing along. And, and as an investigator, you were noticing that was happening to, to your reports, if I'm correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very, very, uh, disheartening, disappointing, you know, uh, I, when I started writing, uh, my books in 2020, uh, I started going through all my reports and, you know, the thing that I do because I'm, I'm anal, that's a great book. Who wrote that? That's awesome. These yeah. are great. These, these are great books. Yeah. Uh, the, the sad thing is, is that, you know, uh, but here's why, why I found out, and there's no way to dispute it is that when you get a report, you go into BFRO and you get a report and you say, I'm going to assign that one to me. I'm going to take that report. So I sign it to myself. I contact the witness, send them an email. Hey, I'd like to talk to you. I love your report. I really like to get some more details and I make a copy of the report and put it in a file, I start a file on it, you know? And my realtor training does that, you know, I, I'm a paperwork freak, not because I enjoy it, but because you got to do it. I mean, that's how sure. you stay legal and employed as a real estate agent by, you know, having copies of everything in duplicate and triplicate. So anyway, I got a full copy of the report. Then I call the uh, witness. We talk, I get all the data, you know, and people, when they type these reports in, they're, excited they forget things they're just you know just you know some of them are freaked and they just they just give you the bare minimum you know i saw a sasquatch it disappeared it, it did this it did that and so i got to call and piece the story together and say just calm down just tell me the story just go through it so i get the whole story all right guys and, you've been injured in a... and then that's then i make a copy of that report and then i turn it in to bfro i said i recommend that this gets published so they do or they don't well, I started noticing that a couple of my reports, when they were published, weren't the same reports I turned in. And then I had a witness call me up and he was ticked off. You know, uh, that's not what I told you. What'd you do to my report? He was, you know, he was livid. I'm going, boy, you know, I, I, they sanitized your report. They took some things right. out and I even gave him Matt moneymaker's email. I said, you, you talk to him. No response. Just, you know, and was it one of those, one of those details that was, was out of the ordinary? Was it, I mean, where was well, it? Not, that not my world. It just showed intelligence. It showed okay. a thinking reasoning sapient sentient being making decisions but didn't like that right and, and you'd kind of mentioned a little bit about what what aspects or, or attributes of sasquatch or encounters that they wanted to kind of avoid was it was they just want to keep them a dumb ape i mean that, that's really it you know and you know i talked to matt about it and he, he actually you know admitted to one and i've got at least five but that's not the, the real point the point is that the bfro database is compromised because you don't know and i know that there's four or five other guys that i've talked to men and women who are going through the same thing our our reports are all messed up they're all you got key things taken out right or they just disappear altogether if it's just too paranormal too quantum too weird so they just they just take this stuff out. So you know the world's largest database is corrupt. You don't know what's real and what's not. You can't count on any of that data being accurate. You know, and he you know they take a lot of things or just a couple of things out. And that's the dumb thing. If you're gonna sanitize a report, why would you take my stuff out and then publish it anyway? 
what the heck are you thinking? I mean, you know, am I not going to notice? Is my witness not going to notice? The witness right. says, you know, it's just insulting. You know, it's insulting to the witnesses right. who have a hard time maybe reliving some of this because it's like mind boggling. It blows their mind, you know, and it took a lot of courage for them to come forward and then to have your stuff disrespected, you know, so to speak. You know, right. what right. are you afraid of? You know, it's just, it, it's just, it's stupid. And I know he's thinking, well, you know, it's hard enough to get, you know, anybody to believe in Sasquatch. Then you throw in the paranormal or the woo or all that stuff. You know, we'll just, we'll never convince anybody of anything. We've got to take it in baby steps. I said, you know, Matt, honestly, the people you think you're going to lose, you're going to, replace them fivefold with the people that are having these incredible events that you're refusing to acknowledge. Right. And more yeah. and more people are having them, you know? Right. And so it, it's just, it's counterproductive and it's disingenuous. It's dishonest. It's just absurd. You know, I think I, I was supposed to be on a show with uh, Mark here a few months back and uh, to talk about this with Matt Moneymaker and Matt, bailed out he said well if carter's on there i don't want to be there <laughs> i mean <laughs> what does that tell you <laughs> you know right i was, I was supposed to be on a show and I, it, it matt said well if he's there we're not going to be there's matt and three or four of his cronies you know should so, just have an op, op, at least an open debate at least discuss discussion to, yeah right just a discussion just, and, you know i'm not going to jump through the screen and grab your throat you know, and, you know but that has but that has given you though uh, an opportunity since, you know, the, the details that you were encountering and hearing about that weren't included, that, that, that they were avoiding has given you an opportunity in a way. With, well, yeah, I mean, they won't have anything book. to do with it. You know, but a lot of those reports are just gone. I mean, you're, you know, if I look at some oddball stuff, you know, they have the, you know, the classification system, which is, Class A, Class B, Class right. Class A is a, you know face to face, I, eyeball. I see it. There's no mistake. I know what I saw. Right. Class B is I heard something, I thought I saw something, I smelled something, but you didn't really see it. That's a Class B. You're hearing whoops, knocks, calls, yells. You know, you smell something really odd and funky, like you know everyone described with Sasquatch. Right. Right. You see a big, huge something running from tree to tree, but you don't know what it is, but it's suspicious that's a class b class c is secondhand story well my uncle bob told me about my carl my grandpa saw one uh, about 40 years ago so that's third hand so we don't even mess with those and i, I agree with that i mean that you get no usable data out of a class c report you know but then they have the other categories and that's how you bury stuff ufo insane hallucinating obvious joke you know paranormal so that's a disqualification as far as a classification yeah i'll never see the light of day never seen it gotcha i gotcha I so, gotcha. And well, it's but you know people are calling me now right and i'm nobody really in the scheme of things but you know, they're calling me and others telling me the things that they want to tell and share with when they know i'm going to listen to them I'm not going to scoff. I'm not going to try to convince them that you saw something else. What you think you saw, you didn't really see is this, that, or the other, but you know, who am I to tell you what you saw? You know, right. I, I, I give you options. I say, well, you know, here's the possibilities because I do want to do due diligence on everything, whether I prove it or disprove it or agree with it. You know, I, I would give the other options. So you've done your homework. Right. You know, and if you go through all all the well, it might have been this. Well, it's not a deer standing on its back legs. It's not a bear. It's not a guy in a ghillie suit. Uh, you, you you go through the whole thing, and you if you're left with, you know, I can't explain that. I can't explain that. I've experienced that, and I know that's exactly what I saw. And you saw this. You're telling me exactly. I could have been saying the same thing that you just said ten minutes ago. Uh, three years ago. So, you know, you, you just go through a process of elimination and you talk to these people, 
they feel so much better because someone's listened to them and spoken to them intelligently and respectfully. Right. And you're not, I'm not trying to go, <laughs> man, buddy, what are you smoking? You know, that's what, what are some of those things though, that, that, that are, that, that, that you're running into that are, that are common, you know, that, that people that have kind of these, um, extraordinary ex- experiences that, that are in your books, you know, yeah. that are out of the ordinary. I mean, I mean, it's, 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 it's mind speak. It's, 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 uh, also speak, it's, uh, you know, uh, I had a orbs, source, yeah, orbs, uh, uh, infrasound, uh, making you see something that's not really there. Interdimensional uh, aspects, changing the vibrational frequency. It walked into a tree, and I never saw where it came out. It just was gone. It walked into a tree, and I never saw it, or it just vanished. Like the first time I saw one on thermal, right. uh, that, that vanished. That was it for me. I I quit. I turned in my dumb ape only club cards and um, right. IDs and everything <laughs> and i joined the dark side yeah and that's another aspect of this too because you you've kind of shifted your belief in since you've been in this from from the beginning like you just said from kind of a, a dumb ape aspect to hey there's something totally different you know yeah and I, I never really bought into the dumb ape but i, I was with a group here in missouri uh including the guy who uh used to lead expeditions he's now leading them again but uh that job was taken away from him and given to me by matt because he didn't care for the way the guy was doing it but that's a whole nother story but their little clique their little clan the they believe it's there's no paranormal aspects you know that there we're on opposite ends of the spectrum sure. well you know that only gives you so many potential answers to what's going on. If right. Just, well, there's a dumb ape. Well, it might as well be a giraffe. You know, if, you know, if it's just a dumb ape, it could be just any animal, but too many people are experiencing and reporting the same things. They don't know each other. They don't want right. anything. They've seen something that changed their lives on a serious level. I mean, some people are PTSD affected. I mean, they're, you know, depends on your deep seated belief system at the time that this event happened, what it yeah. does to you, you know? And, and how do you deal with that when you're, when someone, one, someone's, you know, tr- trusting you to share, share that, you know, uh, experience with you and, and, and they're coming to grips with, with what, what happened. I mean, how, how do you deal with that on a, you know, a, a human level? Because that's, I mean, that's pretty raw when, when, when somebody's, you know, sharing with you that something they might have not totally, totally anybody else. Cause you'd said people, some of these people have lost relationships, you know, nobody's believing them. I mean, mm-hmm. that's, that's what people yeah. don't, don't really realize about some of the, the reluctance for, for people to come forward is because because of the ridicule and then when we add on top of it not just being you know a big facade but something that's a little bit more paranormal beyond that i mean i mean how does that affect you well you know that's actually a, a pretty good question i was talking about this uh to my wife uh but like a couple of the women i'm talking to right now this happened to be women witnesses uh it drains me at times. I, you know, I will, after a two hour conversation, I'll go lay down and take a three hour nap and I don't even have any control. I'm just like, man, I got no, I got no energy. What? I'm just zapped. I, you know, I, I laid down on the floor in the house we were rehabbing because I was suddenly just drained after being exposed to the energy that they were sharing with me, you know, and the stories, you know, it, 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 you know, and some of the people are crying. You can hear it in their voice that, you know, manly men are like trying not to be upset and voices cracking and, and stuff like that. So, you know, I have to be, you know, and a lot of researchers are the same way. You respect these people. You don't 
deride them. You don't make fun. You listen intently and you write it all down and you discuss it. And what do you think? How did that make you feel? You know, you talk to them like you care. And I do care. You know, I, right. I, I know what these people are going through, you know, and if right. you haven't gone through it, you will never understand. If you have not gone through a sighting, even if it's just a road crossing, which are half of all the sightings in America are right. road crossings or walking through the woods or watching me while I'm fishing, that kind of stuff. Right. But the others are the ones where it just you're seeing something that you're told does not exist. And then it does. It's like an alien. I mean, you you don't see them. You, they're not around. And all of a sudden, <gasps> what the heck? You know? And so with these people, they're, they're affected to their core. So I have to be, you know, the a psychiatrist, psychologist, whatever. But I just talk like I know them. Sure. And, and I do care. And I talk to them, you know, about everything but Sasquatch until they want to bring it up again. You know, how's the kids, you know, how's your new job? You got a new house, you know, Hey, how's the, how's the old car you're restoring? I mean, you, you just talk about everything and try to get the mind off of it and let them start talking, you know, about it, you know, and th these two people I'm dealing with now finishing up chapters in their book, they have started opening up more as we've talked on and off for the last month. The other lady I've been talking with on and off for about six months. Right, so it doesn't happen overnight, as far as as far no, as people not. coming out with some of the, some of these details and trusting you. Yeah, and, no, and, they reach and, out to me. I don't right. seek them out, but right, I let them do it at their own level. And now come on, and, lady, I got a book to write. Come on, yeah, hurry up. <laughs> you know, I, I, and I'm not doing it. You know, and it's just the report. You know, that's the reason I wrote a book in the first place. I've done all these reports. You know, I've got about probably 250 reports here. I've only had a hundred published. So I've got all this other stuff, right? You know, uh, I wait for them to talk to me on their own time and level and at their pace, but I just let them know you cannot say anything that I am going to ridicule. Just pretend I'm a shrink or whatever it takes. But these two women I'm dealing with right now, they are starting to open up more and more and more, you know, to the point I got to like reach a stopping point on one of these ladies uh, because it opens up a whole nother couple of chapters, you know? Well, and, and you started to experience some things yourself um, after mm -hmm. a trip to, to Illinois. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of want to make this also kind of your realization of some of these things that are going on, not just you taking reports, but things starting to happen on, with, with you oh yeah, you're out yeah. There. No, I, I've all kinds of bizarre stuff even my wife has you know here right has, you know but you know but that started in illinois with that with that trip where there were some rocks that were left based on kind of how many people were there with you on your on your expedition at the time was, was yeah, that 2019 evidence of enigma two yeah and you see that log right and down here at this end is one little rock and here is five on the other end of the log now when i led the expedition that was 2019 uh there were five people actually it was only four uh somebody uh, though we had somebody uh leading the expedition in illinois that person bailed out at the last minute. So they weren't going to do it. And a lot of people canceled. They refunded money. Well, there were still five or six people that wanted to go. I said, they were adamant. I paid my money. You got my money. I want to go on an expedition. So they did an all points bulletin. BFRO said, hey, does anybody want to do an expedition in Illinois? The so-and-so couldn't do it at the last minute. And uh, I was sitting there going, hmm. Oh, I haven't been to Illinois in a while. And I've got a good friend who lives there. And so I said, Hey, I'll do it. What the heck? Cause I wanted to, you know, I hadn't been there. And uh, my buddy Harold, who's a, a partner of mine in Illinois and another friend, Chris, 
uh, but Harold uh, went with me. So there was myself, four people, and Harold. So we did the expedition. We found a lot of track. We cast a lot of tracks. The people were very excited. There was a lot of activity. Uh, nothing we could, you know, we could hear them. They were throwing rocks and pebbles at us at night. We, they, we, they would not interact with us. They, other than that, they were just messing with us. And so it was invigorating. It was active. And it, we got the, we heard them watching us at night we could hear them walking along and plopping their butts down and and listening and you hear some grunts and you can hear them shuffling around and, but they're just watching us you know which is creepy in and of itself because they won't interact so right. you just don't know oh, are they planning to do something or are they just watching the stupid humans it walking around at you know midnight <laughs> in the trail of tears in, in illinois and wasn't there also a, a footprint you guys saw there and a tree had been pushed down over the footprint Oh uh, gosh, yeah, 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 yeah. There was a we we found a bunch of footprints and we cast them. And uh, it, it, I took the people out during the day because this is I showed them what I do. So I go out and I scout areas. You know, I, I kind of already scouted this area, but I scout the areas to make sure they're maybe going to be fruitful in showing us some activity, hearing something, whatever. We found three different tracks. We cast them. We came back later in the day to dig them up. Little trees had been pushed over, covering all three tracks. They were just small trees, you know. They're you know about a couple, two, three inches around, just saplings, but they've been pushed over and were hiding right. the tracks. I said, "Well, guys, in case you don't know it, this means we're onto something. We're in their neighborhood. We're in their living room because they're not happy we found their footprints." why they didn't just destroy them which would be easy just go over there and walk all over them they didn't uh right. but anyway so they covered up the tracks well we found them and everything and you know so uh the opinion the the expedition was a success and so everybody went their separate ways that was 2019. so it was myself four of the people in harold who was my partner there right. now uh he has had cancer, a stroke, and some other injuries. So he could not go down the ravine that we were going that night. So he stayed in the parking lot in his car right. on one night. He stayed back in camp the other night because he was just too worn out. He was physically just unable. It was too treacherous for him and footing and everything. So... We go back in 2020 because the vibe was really good. So I, I wanted to go back and see what, uh, if it still felt like it felt. Sure. We were there. And it was just myself and Harold. So he lives in Illinois. I, I live in here in Missouri. So I drive down to meet him and COVID had already hit. So I drove down on a Wednesday and we met. We went down and we, it was just only going to be for a day because the COVID, nobody kind of knew what was going on. So everything was shut down, but there's nobody out there at all. Right. We didn't see anybody when we were there the year before, period. We didn't see anybody at all either. Yeah. Because uh, here's one one thing. When I was asking around town where to go, everybody that had an idea said, well, I know there's one place you don't want to go. And that's this place down here. There ain't nobody in town that will go there after dark. You just don't want to go. There's weird stuff going on. I said, well, that's where I'm going. <laughs> because you don't tell me that. Tell me of don't course. go. You know, right. I'm going, mm -hmm, okay, okay, I'm good. So, right. so Harold and I are there, and um, he doesn't get to go all the way down. He gets about halfway down, and he has to take a break. So I go back down to the tree uh, where, you know, that, that log that you saw with the, the rocks. On right. It, that log was a fallen log and it was up against a bank at the time we saw it and we saw activity. And that's kind of where we stopped because, uh, the people I was, I had with me, there was one, uh, expedition goer. I was concerned that she would just freak and go running amok into the woods. And yeah, I don't want that. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I did not want to, you know, uh, go any further. So we said, uh, if y'all had enough experience for the day, let's just go on back. And they all agreed, you know, a couple, everybody, but one right. you know, 
wanted to go back. So anyway, so Harold and I are there. We go down and I'm going to tell you what, Harold, uh, I'm going back tomorrow morning. So I'm going to leave a camera here and I'll come back and get it in the morning All on right. my way back to Kansas City. So he said, okay. So I went back. I left a camera down there by that log that you saw. Right. And so I went back the next morning, uh, which was Thursday. I got there about eight o'clock. We left about 1.30, or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It was October. It was almost exactly a year since I was mm. there before. So uh, we left. And so from about 1.30 or 2 till about 5 or 5.30, that's all the daylight you had because it was winter and it was sure. cold. There was nobody out. And so uh, I, I'm mentioning that now because I'll, I'll get to it. So anyway, I go back the next morning on the way back to Kansas City to get my camera. I go over there and there is that log with those rocks on them. Those rocks were not there the day we were there. They were put right. there overnight. The five rocks on one end is me, the leader, that pointy rock, and the four people behind me are the expedition goers. They're following me. The little short round rock at the other end of the log is Harold. He's right. short and round, and he was there, but not there. He was Absolutely. not with us. And I, I was looking at that. I'm going, well, that who come out here and did this? You know, I'm looking at it, and it's just suddenly, boom. Oh my God. And I'm getting the chills right now. And I'm telling you the sure. story. I get chills every time I tell it. Cause it's like, Oh my God, that's, that's us. There's six people. That was six people on the expedition. There's five and the one Harold right. was here, but not here. And the other people, I called him up uh, and told him Harold. And he was like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Send me pictures. So I sent him pictures. And so I went, I'm in a relationship. These guys are talking to me. You know, it was, it, it was like that. And so, that's what, that's when it, that's when it started. That's, that's what when it's all about, well, here's the deal. Here's the, even the better deal. I call my wife to tell her what happened. And it was about eight thirty nine o'clock in the morning. And, uh, she goes, when did that happen? I says, well, I don't know exactly, but. I'd say it was sometime after eight or nine o'clock at night because, you know, we were there and, it, you know, COVID and there's just nobody out there. Nobody goes there. The, the whole town is scared of that area, you know, because it's the trail of tears and there's a lot of death and sadness in that specific area. Right. So she goes, well, I don't know if this means anything, but last night around 10 o'clock, I'm getting ready for bed. There's a big blue orb flying around our bedroom. And not only does she see the orb, it's about a golf ball size, it's blue, but she also sees it in our mirror on our dressers. And so she's she's seeing it in real time and the reflection. So it's not like it's her imagination or it's a car drove by our neighborhood. Right. A car does not drive through our neighborhood, nor do car lights come in our just the way the house is situated. You know? Exactly. We live on acreage on a one lane road. So there's just not a lot anyway. And she saw it flit around the room and then it went into the bathroom and disappeared. Okay. And I'm going, Oh my God, they know where I live. Awesome. You know, it was just, you know, it just told me, you know, I almost got teary eyed. I was just going, Oh my sure. God, I can't sure. believe it. You know, so now when you when now when you come back, you come back home, and that was what two years ago? It was been been two years. That was in 2020. And we, yeah. we went back in 2021. And I took my Sasquatch partner here, Brian, mm -hmm. and I met Harold and another Sasquatch partner, uh Chris uh in Illinois. They both live in Illinois. Gotcha. And uh, uh we met and we went back to the area. And when we got there, Harold, by this time, was able to physically get down to the whole area where the log and he was able right. to get all right. the way down there. 
And so we got down there. All five of those rocks were gone. The rock that represented Harold was where the other five rocks were. And it was like they were acknowledging that Harold finally made it there. Gotcha. And gotcha. I know it's the same rock because I dusted it for fingerprints. That's what you, that's what you said. The year before. Okay, and so how did... So- so how this how does experience get you into the next step, which is kind of the, the quantum aspect of, of Bigfoot, the interdimensional aspect of Bigfoot, and and you get it into to to meditating? Was it was it was it those these couple of realizations, this progress, these different signs that you you were starting to see, and things were making sense on a mental level with you? It, it wasn't necessarily about the physical aspect of seeing it or that experience these are things that were starting to like come to you in a in a kind of whole different message a whole different way yeah no uh and i i i started keeping a list of uh what have i called it oh strangeness at home since 2000 <laughs> appropriate that's appropriate yeah there's been all kinds of stuff happening in our house now, some you can write off as, well, I was a uh, light bulb was flickering as maybe it's about to burn out or, but, you know, I'm talking about voices in my head, mm-hmm. uh, seeing visions. They're showing me where they live as I sleep. Uh, my wife and I are both kind of type A's and kind of high strung. And so we started a couple, two, three years ago listening to meditation at night, every night before we go to bed. So we can just, you know, uh, chakra cleansing, raising your vibrational awareness and uh, just, you know, relaxing and doing the breathing and and so we could sleep and maybe, you know, connect to the records, all that kind of stuff, you know? Absolutely. And so, but during all this, I'm getting visions. I just got a vision three, four nights ago of their home. And my wife had a pillow yanked out from under her head while she was sleeping. Uh, I was being picked up. There was little hand, hands, little hands and fingers uh, working their way under my legs, like scooping me up in bed. Uh-huh. And there was like three or four hands under each leg. And they lifted me up and they were starting to pull me off to the edge of the bed. And my wife at that time gets up and goes, she's going to the bathroom. I'm going, are you seeing this? Can you see this? What the heck? Do you see, do you see what's going on? Doesn't even hear me. She just like, I'm not there. She just walks into the bathroom and when I'm looking through this, it's kind of like just a little bit of a haze. Right. And, but maybe like lucid, not maybe lucid dreaming or yeah, yeah, my wife suggested that, but it it was awfully lucid if that's what it was. Cause I felt the little hands and fingers working their way under my legs. Now, was this while you were while you were meditating or was this after you? No, 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 no. no. It was about one 30 in the morning. We were, we'd gone to sleep. Okay. Okay. And she got up to go to the bathroom and I just happened to hear her. And I, you know, cause I normally hear her when she gets up or she hears me and they're carrying me off to the side of the bed and she's in the bathroom. Uh, when she gets done with her stuff, she flushes the toilet. Bloop, I get dropped on the bed and it's over. And she turns out the light, walk back in and she sees I'm awake and I'm, I'm, I'm going, did, did you not hear me when I was talking to you? No, I didn't. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You know, we, I, I didn't hear anything. Right. She did not hear me at all. It's like I was in another world. Maybe I was lucid dreaming. I don't think so. But, you know, but my whole point is so many things started happening after that contact in 2019, 2020. I started keeping a record. Right. Well, you said you mentioned home because we we had talked about where you were you were in the in the in the middle of meditation, clearing your mind when 
a, a vision, like you'd said, uh, uh, of an area that looked like where you had researched kind of popped into your area and you were just kind of talking to yourself or, or, mm-hmm. or relaxing to the point of like, Hey, opening your mind to maybe I can, you know, you know, yeah. And, uh, uh, and it's, it, so they, they're showing me a, uh, it looked remarkably similar to the area there in Illinois, but it also looked very similar okay. to my area here in Missouri. And you were it, actually seeing visions of big, big feet, big foot in, in their behavior. Yeah. Look, kids running around chasing bugs. I mean, it's, it's like a Saturday evening post, you know, with a, just the, all American family life, you know, the kids and the adults playing together, except they're Sasquatch instead of humans. You know, they're just frolicking, uh, some sitting on logs, you know, and I'm going like on a conveyor belt through this little gully. And uh, it's like I'm on a conveyor belt. Right. And I'm going through and I'm I'm looking to the right and the left. I'm watching, you know, kids play and there's a you know deer, a couple of Sasquatch and you know, and the uh but I'm going a certain speed, but everything here is going by faster than I know I'm moving, you know. And I I credit that to their version of time and space as they know it. And I am observing their version of time and space because it's not it's not the same. And it coincides with the way people describe them moving when their body is going like this. That's what you mentioned. Their feet are going, you know, I mean, it it mirrors that exactly. So anyway, uh, I'm seeing all this stuff. And I'm in the one night I said, uh, where is this? Because this looks like one of my areas is this uh, where is this and the voice in my head says this is our home home i'm going wow that that's really cool and so this happened about four or five times and then one time it was let's see this is december almost december of this year this would have been the end of uh Last year, first part of this year, January, we had a dusting of snow here in Missouri. And so uh, when I was seeing this vision again, and uh, this is always at night after our meditation, gone to bed, Mm -hmm. uh, I said, well, I don't think that's Missouri. I didn't think they were going to tell me where it was, but I said, well, I don't think it's Missouri because we had snow uh, last night. And there's no snow. So this must be Illinois. The next night, and I never had two nights in a row ever until this time. The next night, I see the same vision, and it's got a dusting of snow. Hmm. It's like they're listening to me. You want snow? Here you go. So you start, so you're starting to experience some of these things that have popped up in the in the books previous. Um, reports that you've you've taken. So I mean, I mean, I, I, ha, I mean, <laughs> what, what, now when you go out and or, or you don't even have to go out. I mean, in, in in your in your in your in your mind, Carter. I mean, kind of wh- where are you at with this now? I mean, it, it's like you know, it's kind of it kind of blows your mind a little bit as far yeah, as yeah. Well, you know, I, I've I come to tam- terms with it in 2014 when I saw that one just disappear. Right. I was looking, walking, watching through my thermal camera, looking for a group of expedition goers that were lost because they didn't do what their daddy told them. I'm their daddy. You took the wrong turn. They got lost right. in one of my research areas. And so we're waiting for them. So we're maintaining radio silence, being quiet, number one, so we could hear them because we had bad radio uh, reception because we we're down in a holler. And so that's why we could not communicate with each other because they were lost and they couldn't tell us where they were. And I couldn't figure out where they were. I wasn't going to go walking off in the dark looking for them because I don't even know where they are. They could be two miles away. Right. So I was just waiting for them. I was looking through the woods for a heat signature. I was not recording, but I was looking through my thermal, you know, and uh, uh, note to self. 
don't quit recording because you want to save your battery life. Buy extra batteries because I will always, not. always be recording. Cool. <laughs> well, now, well, now, well, now, for for you, I mean, where kind of where do you see this see this going? What do you, what do you? I, I know you you've got these books. You're 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 getting people a safe space to kind of have an uh, an outlet for these you know different types of experiences. But for you personally, I mean. You know, this has raised more questions than when you got into this. I mean, yeah. I mean, what, what, when you go out now, I mean, what are you hoping, what, what kind of, what experience do you, are you hoping to have your personally? I mean, take out the books, take out, you know, you know, the, this whole Bigfoot world. I mean, Carter himself, when you're out there, I mean, you're having these experiences, this almost a, a personal relationship with these beings. I mean, what, when you're out there, I mean, what, what, what are you like, man, I'm really freaking enjoying this. This is awesome. If I run into one of these, it's great. If if not, I can still have a a, 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 a good experience no, no matter what. Or I mean, you know, what what you know in five years, what do you hope to 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 see have happened mm-hmm. based upon what your last five years have been like? Well, it's everything that you just said. You know, I, I, I'm enjoying it. I'm learning. You know, uh, you know, when I go out to to my research areas. Uh, I know probably 90% of the time there's a couple of areas that are just very active. They know who I am. They know who my partner is. who has gone with me uh, several times, Brian. Uh, and so I expect to hear them. I don't, I have my equipment. I leave it stacked up right in front of the fire. I'm just sitting right there. I said, guys, I don't have any cameras out. I'm not recording any voice. I'm just sitting here enjoying the woods. I'm 300 miles away from my house because it takes me that long just to get that far away from the house and get rid of the vibe I want to get away from and, and enjoy the woods here. And I've, I've had them throw stuff at me. I've had them chatter and snicker and, you know, laughing at me and cackling. And, you know, I, I think it's all, you know, juveniles, but I said, I just want to know what you know and what you're trying to, to tell me and others, you know, because I think they're here to keep us from killing each other, destroying the planet. You know, I think they've been here much, much longer than we have. They're far more intelligent than we have, than we are, excuse me. And if they can bend the vibrational frequency, if they can bend time and space, somehow and quantum science quantum mechanics all tells you that that's all possible uh right. they can being, two, being in two places at one time you mm-hmm. know that's mm-hmm. that's mathematically yeah possible becoming invisible where you're standing right there and you just blink you're gone but you're really still there i mean you know there's all aspects of this and you know Meditation does allow you to slow down your vibrational frequency, uh, allows you to, you know, perhaps change uh, your perception of the world, uh, how it affects you, uh, all of that stuff. It's all theoretical, but, you know, quantum science, quantum mechanics states that that is possible based on scientific procedure. And do you think you're in? then you think your mindset or your intention as, and when you go out there may affect your, your experience. I mean, some people have noticed that if you got a negative experience or negative attitude or a, a bad vibration, that maybe you won't have as many experiences or a different type of experience. I think you'd mentioned, uh, that experience with the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, forestry crew where there was a, a two groups of people and one of them were kind of the macho aggressive type people. And they had a different experience versus some of these other guys are more happy go lucky, kind of normal, just kind of open-minded people. And, and when they ran into these beans that their experiences were just totally different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, I vetted that witness till I was sick. And there's no way in heck he's lying or making any of this stuff up, you know. And he was on somebody else's show, uh, Sibylla Irwin, who does artwork for my books. 
uh, she has a show now on YouTube. It's called uh, Sketching Encounters. Right, right. You'd mentioned he's that. He's reclusive. He wants nothing to do with anybody. He's had a marriage and several relationships damaged because of Sasquatch interactions. Mm -hmm. So his what he told me, but he told her was like spot on, you know, and it is some elaborate, incredible stuff. You just have to read one of these books because right. it's mind boggling. And so it was an uh, ongoing relationship over years with 30, him. Encountering, 30, 40 years. Yeah. Right. Where actually reach, uh, reaching through the wall of the cabin and touching him in the forehead. Um, through knocked him, down, knocked him dead. Right. He's uh, right. having an out of body experience. He's looking at his body laying on the floor. All the all the kind of quantum and paranormal things. So you know, but you know, that stuff is theoretically possible, and we we don't know, so we can't say that's not possible. That's ridiculous. You know, and that's where the Sasquatch world is so divided. You know, with the apers only, or everybody else. It's either apers or we'll call it paranormal or quantum, you know, apers, you can only answer so many questions, you know, if you adhere to it's a dumb ape only, you can only answer so many things. What about all these thousands of witnesses that are coming forward and describing paranormal, esoteric, abstract, bizarre, Star Trek stuff going on? They're not all crazy. You can't, no one person like myself or a few others can run into every crazy person who's seen a Sasquatch. It's just not possible. They're not, they're not, they may have been driven crazy seeing one, but they're not crazy when they describe the things they're describing, you know, and it's so consistent with whatever everybody else is saying. They don't know each other. They don't want anything. They just want a safe place to lay their shoulder and tell their story without being laughed at. So it matches up so much. It's just not possible that myself and other people have run into the 10,000 people that are sh lunatics. Right. And, 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 and of these ones that you've heard were the ones that you, you, you had a hard time believing or, or, or were skeptical of, but, um, you know, after a little bit more details that you were like, well, geez, you know, that does sound yeah. a little bit more. Well, you know, when I saw the one just disappear, I'm watching on the thermal and it just poof. It was like a flashbulb, just an explosion. This boom is gone. It's 1130 at night. It just vanished right there. Right. I'm looking at it. So I cannot possibly talk to somebody and go, yeah, I don't know if I believe that because that changes everything. When you see that, when you right. see someone walk through a tree, it's like if you see a ghost. And, 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 and that was one in one of the one of the uh, accounts. Also, was one a guy thinking that he saw one walk through a tree or walk into a tree and and not come out the other side. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's entirely possible. I mean, there's because we don't know. You know, and there are stories. I know we're getting close on time. We were supposed to. We, we've got about up. ten minutes or so. I okay, think yeah. about ten you know, minutes. There's you know there's you know theories in the you know the Canadian uh, deep 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 forest uh, that they go and they will die inside a tree if it's right. time to die. They will go into a tree. The trees, the forest. The animals, the Sasquatch, they're all living, connected, uh, living, breathing entity. It's one mass entity. And we, just because we don't understand it, doesn't mean it's not really happening. It just means we don't understand it. We can't explain it, you know? Right. Uh, so uh, of the two, your, your two previous books, you, you had one that focused a lot on the, 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 uh, the man that we had just kind of alluded to about him um, having experienced over 30 to 40 years. And now with the new, the new one, what if there were just more stories that were, were, were coming out and they, the other two books couldn't, uh, couldn't contain all the, all the accounts that were now cutting in because I think you'd mentioned that the first ones kind of gave an opportunity for 
for people to feel more comfortable about telling these types of encounters? Yeah, the first book, the orange book, Sasquatch Evidence of an Enigma, uh, it was, you know, and Ron Moorhead uh, did commentary in my book for me. Uh, but it, it is more of a kind of a meat and potatoes. It's almost a, 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 a primer. You know, it talks about uh, structures, uh, rock clacking, communication, uh, you know, footprints and uh, language and the fact that they can count uh, things of that nature. It, it infers much more intelligence than people are willing to give them. And, and I wrote the first book, people started coming out of the woodwork, telling me all their stories that nobody would listen to. So that's where the second book came. And the second book is probably 50, 60% Star Trek, paranormal, quantum, bizarre stuff. Yeah, it's, it's chock full, chock full of encounters. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, this third book, I have, I think, two stories that were in the second book that have had incredible updates, some changes. So I put those in the book. and But the rest are brand new people. And they're either visitation, habituation, paranormal, quantum, mind speak, infrasound. They're just you know uh, missing time right. that was in the first uh, the second book and right. uh, i right. heard another story about missing time from a, a conference i did in joplin oh really w Yo, was that a missouri missouri uh, encounter uh, oklahoma oklahoma oh it was crazy uh you know we probably don't have time but real quick we got about seven minutes we're good go ahead okay. uh this lady came up to me to my booth started talking to me and she said, I got a story I want to tell you. She is a scientist. Her lady friend who was with her, she's also a scientist. Her and two other people, also women, were coming back from a conference in Oklahoma. And she started to tell me the story. They're driving down the highway. And they left about 8, 830. They're driving through Oklahoma, straight west. I don't know where they were going and they saw a sasquatch bent down on the side of the highway and they saw it through the headlights they had their high beams on and they start slowing down the sasquatch stands up and it starts running along the highway and it's looking back behind them and they're catching up to it and it starts running faster so they're both going about 40 45 miles an hour because they're starting to slow down with this the sasquatch is keeping up with their car right running down the highway now it's, it's it's a it's a drag race and so they slow down and the creature keeps going it stops turns around and runs across the highway to the other side and disappears into the woods right uh Two scientists, two other women in the scientific field, but not degreed. There's four skeptics that were baptized right there on the spot. They're, you know, scientific. I need a body on a slab. I need to see it. Sure. Or it just, uh, boop, okay, here you go. Now what? They lost an hour and a half of time. They... They left this conference at about eight o'clock at night, a little after, driving down the highway. They see this thing around 8 15, 8 30. Uh, when it's over and they're sitting there talking about it, next thing they know, it's 10, a little after. They lost an hour and a half of time seeing a Sasquatch. My guy in my second book up in uh, New England states, he lost six hours. Right. Sasquatch. You have to read the story, but you know, that kind of stuff is going on all the time. Somebody, you know, right now, Scott has had an experience and they're just not telling you because they don't want to be made fun of, not by you, but I mean, you're just right. people learn to shut up about stuff. They just, I'm not going to say, you know, because you know, the ones closest to you are the ones that ridicule you because they can, you know, 
oh honey yeah uh did you see a sasquatch was it was it carrying like a, a cooler and a, <laughs> you know a, a cell phone or you, you make fun thinking well it's funny but if that person is seriously and i do mean seriously emotionally affected and it gets into their spiritual being like this has really altered my life and you're right. sitting making fun how much do you think they're going to talk to you next time they're going to say nothing to nobody and that's what what's happening and that's kind of different different than what you'd mentioned with the uh the people that have visitations or, or her habituation because they get to the point of where the, the things that happen are so commonplace that it's like oh yeah you know and yeah, we saw the, the the bigfoot you know two or three times this week it was just kind of walking you yeah, know they forget to tell you you know i'll call up my folks and say you know, hey, Bob, Brenda, I hadn't talked to you in a while. What's been going on? I said, well, you know, just kind of, you know, I retired, just kind of taking it easy. You know, uh, uh, let's see, last month uh, we went to Walmart. See, I got a haircut. And they said, oh, yeah, hey, I, I, I saw a Sasquatch holding her newborn baby. Did I tell you that? Now, do these, do, do these people ever have any any of the, the these esoteric experiences at all? Yeah, or yeah, some of them do. Yeah, uh, uh, orbs are plentiful, yeah. UFO uh flying crafts uh orbs at night craft or long cylindrical rods that are kind of glowing like just like a light bar um uh, one couple down in southeast missouri they see uh oh a ufo that's probably about two three hundred feet long slow it just follows it flies right over their house really yeah. slow so they're they're having the gamut of things but they happen so often they don't think that much i mean they it, it's spectacular and special to them but they they forget to tell me because it's like another part of their day yeah you know, i went and got a haircut went to taco bell went and changed the oil came back home and, oh yeah we saw a sasquatch on the way back in you know yeah, it, it, it's routine I would love to have that kind of, you know. <laughs> now, have they told you anything about the the behavior that they observed that has kind of surprised you as far as like, you know, since they're around them a little bit more often, is there, you know, you you, said, you mentioned something about their personalities and how they kind of get to know the, yeah, the clan they, they or the have, people by yeah, personalities. If they've got children or, or juveniles or, you know, even older ones and stuff, they say, well, that's, a, you know, that's porky. He's got a big belly. We call him Porky because he just uh, he's uh, really kind of fat. You know, he's not built like the other ones. So he, we just call him Porky because I think we, he just sits around and eats, you know. Right. Or that's Pinky. You know, I think I told you about that with the Pinky because uh, that's the juvenile. He's uh, We think he's missing a finger. It looks like he only has four uh, fingers on his hand. We, we just call him Pinky because that's the one that's missing. And what do you think might be the difference maybe between what you're experiencing with, with maybe these esoteric aspects or mind speak and this meditation Versus maybe someone that has these on their property, but is like, hey, I've got other things to do on my property. I got, you know, you know, living to make. I got bills to pay. Sure, I got Bigfoot on here, but I'm not going into this esoteric, you know, uh, road trying to mind speak with this Bigfoot on my property. As long as he leaves my sheep alone or, or my yeah. cattle alone, I'm, I'm cool. Yeah. Well, s some do get into it. And, you know, uh, the one couple I was talking about where they you know, saw the baby, um, they... Uh, uh they're devout christians devout devout christians right but at first they started thinking well maybe this was satanic or evil these creatures but they're interacting with them now i mean they have names for them they they you know and they are not going the route i am but that may be some of that may be that they're not telling me that because oh that's too weird do you know what i mean we gotta sure. go. Sure. No, no, no. I'm I'm just just typing on the. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, and I don't pry. I let them tell me what they want to tell me. I don't say, well, tell me what's going on, because I, I don't want to be the researcher. Because I I have developed friendships with these people. They will call me asking advice, or hey, they'll send me pictures, you know, uh, and or videos. I got a really awesome video from a guy uh, in another area. Uh, of uh, a creature walking right at a trail camera and it suddenly sees the camera and it veers off and goes right behind. You see the side of its face in a big ear. 
Oh yeah. It's really intriguing footage. And you know, it, it almost looks like a dog man type ear. It's a long kind of pointed ear as like a Fox or a dog, you know, it's standing straight up, it's, but it's flat against the head and it's, yeah. Does he want to release? Does he want to release that at all, or does he want to keep that private? I've I, I'm not I'm not sharing it. I have it. You know, I've got stuff that will it'll make you start going. We all, we all know it's out there. We all know it's out. Yeah, there. I've got some video that has been shared with me that is just like you will be a different man when you see it. If you if you think you believe these things, when you see some of the stuff that I got, which I can't share, sure, it's all over. It's like, I know everything I need to know now. I, you know, somebody comes up with a body or tells us what they're really all about. The government, the government and the paper companies and lumber companies quit lying to us. Sure. So they have to eventually. But, you know, I, I, I've got stuff that it, it will just curl your toes. You know, <laughs> I, I, go ahead. Go ahead. But, you know, uh, I, I showed it to my partner and we sat here, watched this 22 second clip for probably an hour let me see that again okay one more time slow it down oh my god it's one of those things you just go i'm glad i'm doing what i'm doing because now i know i'm on the right track because i've it's irrefutable right exactly we'll it will we'll we'll have you we'll have you back again i know you're gonna you know go on your your other shows that you were a staple on i think you said uh Spaced out radio with with Dave. I think you, were, you said you were pretty much a, a staple on that. Yeah, I'm part of his crew up there. I do a, a, a Phantoms and Monsters. You know, with Lon Strickler. Lon Strickler show, right? Yeah, you know, right. Uh, I'm on one of his. You know, I'm one of his go to. You know, people on the crew and uh, Pork and Bean show up there. But I, you know, and these people are all dealing with abstract esoteric things. Right. And, and that's expanding. There's more people that are talking about it. So there's, there's yeah. definitely, you know, much more of a discussion. Well, well, Carter, I really appreciate your time. Um, I wasn't feeling the best tonight and I appreciate you kind of, you know, carrying me along. Uh, I hope I'm not getting this, any, any sickness that's going on. I maybe catch a cold maybe once every two years or something. So yeah, well, that um, microphone you have looks like a, a COVID germ. <laughs> don't don't even throw that out there i'm sorry, I'm sorry. There. but, but ashley has been been tossing your link in there for for your books but where else can people find you what else what else do you want to leave people with what else do you have to kind of plug plug besides your your new book coming out because i, I saw you posted on uh facebook i think uh the, the new yeah. book well i'm doing these two books and uh they're 22 bucks a piece plus shipping i'm selling them Right now, for 35 bucks for both, I sign them, autograph them, and I eat the shipping. So um, you can go to uh, sqexplorer at gmail.com uh, and email me and give me an address. You can go to uh, uh, PayPal and send me uh, 35 bucks in PayPal. Uh, and, but if you just do sq. You know, post that in the. Yeah, just go notes afterwards too. But you know, the new book probably won't be out until after the first of the year because I'm waiting on some artwork, and uh, I have to wait till almost the end of the month for my artist to get done with what she's doing now. And that will be Sibylla again doing the yeah, artwork for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, awesome. uh, but uh, these books are really good. They're enlightening. They're educational. I mean, they they just if you don't have an open mind, don't buy them. But if you have an open mind and will consider some of these things. You don't have to believe any of them, but just consider right. it. Just well, expand your mind a little bit. And if you go, <laughs> that guy's nuts. Okay, well, I bought them both so I can have them, so I can go back and, and ha have something to look at again and, and look at the details. A lot of times mm -hmm. when I listen to encounters on YouTube or a podcast, I kind of forget some of the details. And oh, yeah. this, yeah. the way you put these together in the format and being a, a, a you know an investigator, you, you've got that down as far as you know a, a, an organization that really makes it easy to read. So that's why yeah, I encourage yeah. people. To I do counterpoint. You know, like I say, this is what you said. This is what I think. Then they'll come back and tell me what they think about what I think, and then I'll summarize it up. So you know, I cover all the bases. It's an open mind. It could be any one of. 
25 different things, but you know, we go through it all. So it's not, it's not closed minded interpretation of everything so that it fits my agenda. It's just, it is what it is. Perfect. Well, all right, uh, Carter, we'll let you have, uh, the rest of your evening to yourself and, and thanks for your, for your time. And, uh, folks, I want to let you know that, um, Mark has informed me that since next week is Thanksgiving, um, we will not be having a show and we want you to spend time with your family and, and enjoy that and kick off the holidays in the right, in the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And you know, if there is no show next week, you can always download this show and watch it 40 times. That's right. It helps. It helps the algorithm. It helps the algorithm. And yeah, uh, check, check chat. We've got Spence or we've got uh, Carter's email for uh, where you can reach him. And if you have a report too, if you guys want to get a hold of him, um, you know he has that on his his card, his investigator card. So if you have an encounter that you want to talk to him about, as well as by the book, um, yeah. hit him up. Oh, confidential. Nobody Absolutely. has to know anything. It's nobody's business. Where you live, who you are, doesn't matter. Just tell me, tell the story. Cool. Well, all right, uh, folks, we're going to let you go this evening. And we appreciate you spending the time out of uh, your evening with us. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks. And I think that'll be Mark or Larry will be back. So uh, you've seen enough of me for a while, I'm sure. <laughs> all right, Scott. Appreciate it, man. Enjoy it. You bet. Thanks, Carter. We'll see you guys. Good night, everybody. Thank you.